Sarah, and this is Budget Sew, where we create stylish, fashionable looks as inexpensively as possible. Today, I'm saying goodbye to my skinny jeans and hello to flared jeans. In this video, I'm refashioning a pair of skinny jeans into flared jeans. These are the jeans before. jeans a couple of years ago for about $9.99 from Value Village thrift stores. They were in fantastic condition and the modern black color has stayed true. Last year I decided to move away from skinny jeans but instead of donating them back to the thrift store I refashioned them. I converted my skinny jeans into flares the same way I converted my bootcut jeans into bell bottoms when I was in high school. The fabric that I used to convert my skinny jeans was a black velvet with a swirling gold embroidered pattern. I bought my fabric at Valley Village thrift stores during a store opening celebration. It was marked at $39.99 for 8.5 meters, but I had a coupon for 20% off, so I paid $31.99. That's $3.76 a meter. What a great price. You may remember this fabric from my Simplicity 8243 jumper sew along. The link to the video with that jumper is right here at the top of the screen. I tried on my pants and marked with a pin where I wanted my jeans to start to flare out. I chose to start my flare at the knee, so that's where I placed my pin. Make sure the pin is at the same height on both legs. I used a tape measure and measured from the hem to the pin to check the length. Then I used my seam ripper and opened the outside leg seam. Do not unpick the hem of the jeans, only unpick the side seams from the hem to the knee. I find using a seam ripper much easier than a pair of scissors when opening seams or unpicking my mistakes. To be honest, I only bought a seam ripper last year. I always use my thread scissors to snip and pull the threads. My Nana used to use a single edge razor blade to open seams and my mom has a few of those too, but she always had a seam ripper. I bought my Dritz 638 Deluxe Seam Ripper off Amazon.ca for $3.98. This seam ripper is small and convenient and is indispensable for removing stitches. Since my Jordache jeans were skinny jeans that ended at the ankle, I added a piece of velvet fabric to the length so that the flares did not look too short. Even if I unpicked the hems, they would have still been too short. I chose to lengthen my pants with a 4 inch piece. This amount includes a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the top, as well as a 5 eighths of an inch hem at the bottom. I pinned the long edge of my velvet rectangle to the hem of the pants. I didn't unpick the original hem of the jeans because I wanted the inside of my jeans to look as finished as possible. I cut my rectangles a bit wider than my jeans, so I ended up cutting off the excess fabric. Since my velvet fabric has both a pattern and a nap, I ensured that they ran the same way on each leg. If you decide to sew with velvet, remember that velvet has a nap. The nap is the direction of the pile of the fabric. When you run your hand over the fabric, 
you'll be able to tell whether the fabric feels smooth to the touch or rough and prickly. If the nap is up, the velvet looks darker and absorbs light. And if the nap is brushed down, the velvet's color looks lighter and the nap reflects more light. Then I stitch the additional length to the pants just above the original hem. I chose this black velvet fabric because it's so beautiful and I have lots of it. I used 1.8 meters of it for Simplicity 8243, a flare jumper that has a self-buttoned belt with a removable bag with a flap. I've cut out three more projects from this fabric including Simplicity 9543, a vintage bag, Vogue 7784, a gorgeous hat, and Butterick 6523, a classic blazer. So stay tuned to Budget Sew for the sew-alongs for those patterns. Then I used a straight stitch to top stitch the jeans hem down onto the back of the velvet. I think that top stitching makes a garment look so polished. It also holds the seams in place so that they lay flatter. This top stitching was decorative and mirrored the top stitching already on the jeans. It also strengthened the seams so that they can withstand a lot of wear and tear. Before I continue with the jeans refashion, please like and share this video with your friends and family. I would love to help others sew and refashion on a budget and troubleshoot their favorite patterns. I also love sharing the treasure that I find at thrift shops. If you would like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and press the bell so you receive a notification when I release a new video. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Now, back to the DIY. My next step was to determine how big I wanted the flare to be. A triangular piece of fabric will be inserted into the outside leg seam to create the flare. I measured the height of the triangular piece of fabric that would need to be cut out. The height of mine needed to be 18 and a half inches because when I laid my pants out flat, the new hem to the stitch seam at the knee was 18 and a half inches. Then I played around with the width of the triangular piece. I decided to make it 18 inches wide for a big flare. Then I drew a triangle template on craft paper using those measurements. The easiest way to do this was to draw a line 18 inches long and then at the nine inch mark, halfway, draw a line perpendicular to that line, 18 and a half inches tall. Then join the ends of the bottom line, the 18 inch long line, to the top end of the other line. Then I cut out two triangles from my velvet fabric. My next step was to pin the flare triangles to the jeans outside leg seams. With the right sides of the fabric together, I pinned from the base of the triangle up to the top point. I repeated this on the other side and the other leg. Back at the sewing machine, I sewed one side of the triangle to the jeans. I used black Coates & Clark all-purpose dual duty thread that I bought from Value Village Thrift Store. Usually I don't use secondhand thread when sewing my garments. But this thread was in a big bag of brand new Coates and Clark thread for $1.99. I think there were 20 spools of black and white thread in the bag, so it was quite a steal. I checked the thread before buying it and it was very strong and it's actually newer than some of the thread in my sewing box. I used a Schmetz Universal Needle sized 75 or 11 to sew this project. 
I thought about using a denim or jeans needle, but I was concerned that it would leave big holes in the velvet. Instead of changing the needle for a new sewing project, I used the same needle that I used to sew my Simplicity jumper. It was a risk, but it worked out. My next step was to pin flat the sides of the triangle so that they would be top stitched. I chose black thread for my top stitching to match the manufacturer's top stitching. I didn't use a gold thread because I thought that it would take away from the beautiful swirling pattern of the velvet. Both sides of the triangle should be top stitched, starting at the bottom of the triangle, moving up the leg. Back at the sewing machine, I top stitched the jeans. I liked that my mom's Simplicity sewing book had a chapter about top stitching and decorative extras. The chapter was called Distinctive Details, Making the Difference. It said, your garment style and individuality are determined to a great extent by the designer details that provide the finishing touch. Top stitching is basically a double purpose, holding seams flat and accenting them in a neat linear manner. It may be done in matching or contrast thread, depending on the effect you wish to create. In either case, the stitching must be straight and even since it will show up distinctly on the finished garment. I wanted my new jeans as long as possible, so I added some single fold bias tape in black to maximize the length. I bought this bias tape about 10 years ago, or more actually, from Fabricland, so I can't remember the brand or the price, but at that time I had a sewing membership, so I most likely got it on sale. Back at the sewing machine, I sewed the single fold bias tape to the velvet. As I sewed, I checked to make sure that the thread tension was good and that I caught the bias tape and the velvet together. I ensured that the bottom thread was normal and not loopy and that everything was sewing together well. This is where I marked with a pin where I missed stitching the bias tape to the velvet. Once I had sewn all the way around, I went back and re-sewed that section. The Simplicity Sewing Book instructions on how to add lace or seam binding were, lap the lace or binding a quarter of an inch or six millimeters over the cut edge. Edge stitch in place with the straight or zigzag stitch. Blind stitch hem to finish. My last step was to fold over the bias tape and sew it down. I used a straight stitch rather than the blind hem stitch as recommended by the Simplicity Sewing Book. I found hemming the fabric this way much easier. I didn't use the blind hem stitch because the velvet was very thick the embroidery too bumpy, and I felt that it would put additional pressure on my sewing machine. Here are the finished pants.
look, I'm wearing an Yves Saint Clair blouse with lovely gold studded trim that I bought from Value Village. I bought the earrings, the purse, and the shoes from Value Village thrift stores as well. The necklace came from the Salvation Army charity shop. And the Parkhurst hat is from the Hudson's Bay Company. I hope you enjoyed this skinny jean refashion. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. I love sharing my new, vintage, and out of print sewing patterns and my tips, tricks, quick fixes, and even mistakes when sewing along with you. I also love sharing my wonderful fabric finds that I thrifted from charity shops as well as brand new fabric online and in store. If you'd like to see more from Budget Sew, please subscribe and press the bell so you receive a notification when I release a new video. If you'd like to stay up to date with Budget Sew, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Budget Sew. Thanks for watching. See you next time.